the cover, the gathering room of the central hub of Candyland. William and Nightshade face down Major Ursa, who is decked in sleeveless body armor, which shows off the bear claw tattoos on each of her biceps. On the left, a shocked-looking Darren phases through a wall and into the room. On the right, Jackie bursts through a reinforced door. Scattered around the room, hidden in every shadow, peering from every reflection, you can just discern the outline of eyes. Issue 36, Waxing Gibbous. So I want to open on, speaking of someone who's having a real good time, Darren, you ran past the head of security uh, into the hallway back towards the main hub, at which point said a hallway got blown, as is one of the security protocols here. So you are now in a hallway that is very quickly losing atmosphere. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Going to phase. I'm going to unleash my powers and phase through a wall into a different chamber, any chamber. (laughs) <laughs> just whatever's closest whatever's closest sure so let me let me give you kind of the layout here so relatively close to you mm-hmm. you have the building that you just exited mm-hmm. that's the one with all of the unconscious professor's paradox so you've got that place and that's relatively close slightly further away and you will have to go slightly onto the moon itself to get there is the main hub it would definitely take you a minute or two but you don't have human physiology, which means you could, in theory, get there. I'm going to try and make a run for the hub. Well, let me let me tell oh, you. Let me tell you. No, that's fine. That's fine. Because there is one other thing to note. Now that you're outside and you can really get a look at the South Pole Atkins crater from kind of up close, this place is very, very weird and kind of alien. Because the, the official going theory and the real world theory is that this is a impact crater, but. It's very, very smooth, and it looks like at some point it might have been kind of terraced. This almost looks like it was built. So it looks kind of like a strip mine? Kind of. And at the bottom, you can see another ring of those stadium lights uh, that kind of help illuminate Candyland. But this very much looks like an active quarry. There are definitely machines that look to be, uh, you know, in use to mine something. And you do see a transport pad with a small vehicle on it that looks like it may be kind of a similar model to the shuttle you came in on. So that's what you got. With those options, what do you want to do? I'm still camouflaged, and he saw me phase through, which I'm hoping he'll think is a space ghost. Can he still see me? No, you are outside, and this place is in lockdown, so... Okay, so he can no longer see me. No. All right, I'm going to not go to Bruno. Bruno Finn. I'm leaving him to his fate, which is a long nap, and I want to make a go for the hub. Do you have something to No, I was just curious. Did he, is he actually going to stay conscious? Because she flooded the entire, like, area with those spores. Mm -hmm. You know, (laughs) we might find out. (laughs) But if you're not going back in there to check, we we don't have to answer that question right now. So you're making a run for the hub? I'm making a run for the hub. Okay. I do need you to make a choice here. Okay. So, in your run for the hub, you, first off, you can get there more or less okay. You you have the ability to, you know, shift your density and not, you know, worry about the fact. Basically, there's exploding atmosphere all around you trying to push you around. That's not going to be a huge issue for you. Yeah. You can either try and unleash your powers to get through the door, but if you fail on that, you are basically going to be stuck on this side. Or, you can take a powerful blow... And you will be through the door afterwards. So either I can take your offer and take a powerful blow, but guarantee I get to the doors. Yes. Or I make a a gamble and get through without any harm. Yes. And then I could still get through without any harm on the powerful blow. Depending on how you roll, yeah. You roll really well. Or really badly, actually. So you're just betting on whether you're going to roll high or low. (laughs) Yep. All right, I think I understand. And obviously (laughs) the uh, repercussions for each are slightly different. Yeah. I'm not hopeless, so I could unleash my powers without a subtraction. Mm -hmm. And I would be rolling for Freak, which is is plus two. So you got pretty good odds. (laughs) I'm not not a gambling woman. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? I'm going to take the shot um, and see if I can get through without the offer. Okay. So how are you going to, uh, to unleash your powers to get through this door, to overcome this obstacle? 
Because it's a big, hardened metal door uh, that is mm-hmm. locked in place. All right, I'm going to... It's, I'm holographic, right? But my body's still the same. Yeah. I'm going to rip a tendril off and phase it through the wall, phase it through the door, and then in between the panels and command it to grow, and it's going to become like an explosive alien plant. Nice. I, like I, I don't know if I like that. No, I love it. I love it. Go ahead and unleash your powers. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I feel like I should made a mistake. I shouldn't have picked that one. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. That's not good. That's a six. Uh-oh. Yes. I don't think we have any uh, team. You do you not. Do and we're not there. Not, so we're not can't. there anyway. I guess you could use team selfishly. Yeah, but you we could don't use one selfishly. Yeah. Well, to use team selfishly, you have to be able to, have, you still have to have a teammate there to uh, have the repercussions of that. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's fine. There's none in the pool right now anyway. So kind of a moot point. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. So you do manage to stick your hand halfway through this door, mm-hmm. at which point you realize that there are countermeasures for this sort of thing. Okay. And the door electrifies. I am going to need you to take a powerful blow. Alright. At least you get potential though. You do get potential from that. Oh, that's because true. you did fail that roll. This is why you don't gamble, kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least the gambling has an immediate, like, good thing that happens. I get a powerful blow. No, you took well, potential. No, potential. And oh. if you uh, succeed on succeed fail on this powerful blow, you could get more potential. Yeah, double potential. You did not succeed fail, but that's okay. Yeah. That is that is a seven. Six. Because you have one potential. Oh, you have one yeah. condition mark. Yeah. Uh, so so close. pick one off of that lift. Obviously, you do not have teammates here uh, to lash out at, uh, but I think the other two could work. I'm gonna struggle past the pain in my two conditions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what you gonna mark? I'm gonna be angry. Okay. Mm-hmm. Afraid. That is fair because you are now uh, well and truly stuck on this side of the door for the moment. <sighs> Speaking of which, Jackie, how's it going? Pretty good. So you've got a criminal AI in your head. Yeah, we're having a grand old time. You are. Now, T does take a couple of minutes, by which I mean like a couple of picoseconds, yeah. uh, just rifling through systems uh, uh-huh. to find whatever she can use. It's very, very quick and very brute force, uh, at the end of which she is of the opinion that you can have an absolute field day with this place, and she is beginning to infiltrate and just crash the, uh-huh. the electronic systems here in Candyland. Now, you do know that this will have a couple of uh, side effects, sure. should you allow it. Sure. Uh, first off, she is going to vent the entire atmosphere. Got it. Uh, in the hub. Not, not, where, not, <laughs> okay. here, not here. Not, not here. here. Where, you know, her dad lives. Right. Who wouldn't want to do that? But in the hub where the guards live. Okay. Which is also where where Debbie, Debbie is, is right now. Yeah, I, re- I remember that. Uh, so she is going to open all of those doors and just vent the entire space. Uh-huh. It would also crash communications, which means any chance you have of communicating with the surface from here. And to be fair, any chance that your yeah. that your opponents have of communicating with the surface from here would just get fried. Uh-huh. So the question is... Are you going to let T do this? Yes. <laughs> yes, you should let T do this. Well, can I can I try to stop her from venting the atmosphere, but let her do everything else? Yeah, you can try and stop her. Okay. How would you like to try and stop her? I'm going to say, well, let's hold off on that atmosphere thing. If we're going to try to get your dad out of here safely, he's going to need atmosphere in the rest of the rooms. That seems fair. I would like you to go ahead and provoke uh, T. Provoke. Okay. Yes. So provoke someone. Roll awesome. Superior. superior. Because I'm guilty, so that's that's <laughs> useful. Oh, we're going to mark some potential today. Okay, well, that's, that's a nine minus one, so I still succeed. That's cool. eight. Cool. Uh, so on a seven to nine, they can instead choose one, stumble, mm-hmm. and take plus one forward. But I think in this case, T is just going to listen to what you're, you're saying. And she's going to go, you know what? That is a good point you make there. We're at least going to need access to the landing pad, which has to go through the hub. Right. And since I don't have any way to restore atmosphere once it's vented, no, that's a good idea. Uh, so she does... Mm -hmm. Uh, within probably 10, 15 seconds, you can hear uh, all of the alarms wind down, uh, and you can hear little popping sounds as uh, a lot of the circuitry in this place just explodes from being overheated. Uh Uh-huh. So on the upside, it's a little bit quieter now. That's nice. Yeah, that is nice. I appreciate that. So what are you and your AI buddy doing now? Well, I did kind of make a promise that we're going to get her dad out of here. You did. So I think I'm going to try to do that because I want to keep T on my good side for as much as I possibly can. Fair. To remind the listeners at home, T's dad is a guy named Dr. Virgil Cassiano. Yes. 
uh, who was formerly the head of Kopi's R&D division and is now in uh, Moon Prison and does occasionally help them with tech support because he has that ability. Uh, but he is imprisoned here in the tech wing. Mm-hmm. So are you just going to go to his cell or what are you doing? Oh yeah, I'm just going to walk over and I'm just going to like try to smash the door open. Yeah, that's not going to be a problem. For yeah, you. I think you're not. <laughs> yeah. So Dr. Cassiano is a mid-40s Latinx man um, of Puerto Rican descent. And as you uh, approach his cell and kind of like wind back, he definitely takes a, st- a couple of steps back because this looks like it's going to be big. Yeah. You knock his door right off the hinges. Uh, he looks around and then steps out and kind of straightens himself out. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My, my name is Dr. Cassiano. I don't believe I have the pleasure. Um, I'm, I'm helping T. She wants me to get you out of here. Is, is she around? She's in here. And he kind of, like, nods and, and addresses himself. Very good job, T. Thank you for your assistance. And T in your head does, like, a, the little, like, uh, circle emoji. Uh-huh. Uh, this is kind of like a spinning kind of thing. Uh-huh. And he <clears throat> motions to you to, to lead on. Okay. Because he is not going to be leading the way here. He is a fragile 40-year-old human. I, I imagine so. In that case, we're just going to make our way towards the hub. When you get to the exit to this mm-hmm. building, it is still in lockdown. Right. That is a mechanical connection. T, unfortunately, can't lift that. Fair. So Fair. you have a big, thick, hardened metal door. And you are you, so I'm going to let you handle that however you want to. Yeah. I feel like the way I would probably handle this is to try and smash it down. Okay. It's going to require unleashing my power, it, I assume. It definitely is. Because this is this is a bit much even for you. Okay, um, that's a nine. That'll do. Plus, Bright Freak is one, so that is a ten. Nice. So yeah, you do it. Uh, you smash this door down, and I think... Dr. Cassiano does note that rather than, like, human fist marks, there are big bear marks in it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, But if he does, he doesn't say anything. Now, you've got a long hallway in front of you. And as you head down that hallway, we spin around Candyland to a slightly different hallway, wherein... Slightly different? Really? Wouldn't it just be identical? I mean, yeah, but you're coming up from the other end. Okay. it's, It's, you know, mirrored, really. Got it. Where William and Nightshade, uh, have just carved a hole in this big steel door. Not William, just Nightshade. Just Nightshade. <laughs> uh, with a spoon, in fact. And as you are beginning to make your way down it, you hear the alarm that was going off just, like, sputter and die out, and then you can hear a bunch of, like, popping sounds uh, running along the length of the hallway. I'm not even going to bother with that. And oh, question. Does yeah. this count as breaking something important? <laughs> Actually, I mean, arguably, you just cut off our communications. I broke you did. the base. Yeah, yeah, you did. You know what? Yes. Score. Yes. And since that scene is over, yes, go ahead and erase that. Score. Okay. Now, there is one thing to note. Um, as all these, you know, popping sounds happen and the uh, the lights start kind of, like, flickering, you hear from the other end of this hallway the sound of machine gun fire. Uh, very heavy, like, like minigun-style guns which you will remember, four of which were pointed uh, at a prisoner named Crushing Depths. I do remember this. Oh, Crushing Depths. And you get about a quarter of the way down the hallway before you can hear the sound of a door ripping off its hinges and various rending noises and screams. I uh, briefly stop. I look at Nightshade and I go, oh god, we need to run. Nightshade uh, (laughs) nods at you. (laughs) We take off down the hall. It's off down the hall. (laughs) You get to the end of the hallway, and Nightshade is preparing to cut through this next door. Good, good. And you can see in the doorway opening that has already been, you know, made unusable, a huge hulking form holding the, you hope, unconscious body of one of the other prisoners, and just drops it in the doorway as uh, as they notice that there are two people down here. What do you do? Hmm. What can I do? It's a great question. You've got that really snarky attitude. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the listeners at home, since it's been a couple of weeks, um, <laughs> this giant form is about an eight-foot-tall shark That's with right. legs and huge leathery dragon wings. You can hurt his feelings. Just uh, make a portal to outside? I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Like, no matter how big he is, portals still work. If I can get him to go through a portal, we're fine. Now, I don't know where that portal might go. Or what might happen to it, because it's a little wonky lately, but I'm not really concerned with that. Yeah. 
Now, at the moment, Depths is just kind of considering that you are down there, so this is the ball's kind of in your court. I feel like we're going to just move on and hope that he doesn't give a crap about us. I don't know why he's here. I don't know what he wants. The last thing I want is to engage someone who you're describing as Doomsday slash the Hulk. I do not <laughs> yeah. want to engage with that. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. So you're yeah. just kind of kind of the whole position. For yeah, now. we're, we're okay. just gonna continue down the hall. Like we're mm-mm. Nightshade does, you know, make a an opening in this door through which you can get. And as that's happening. You see Depths kind of look at you for a moment and then walk a few steps into this hallway and grab the uh, the wall in yeah, that big that claw and just pull it out. So this is starting to vent oxygen. And, yep. and now we've vented it. We're venting into the hub. Mm-hmm. And Crushing Depths just walks out that hole onto the moon. So that said, you do have an opening into the main hub now. Which is now venting oxygen. Yeah, for the moment. Now, granted, it's not going to be immediate decompression, but that is a problem that is probably going to need addressing sooner or later. I will consider how to address said issue. What's in the main hub? As you look into the main hub, this place is relatively large. Um, This is an interior airlock, so you do have a secondary way to stop venting because they didn't build this place with just one door. Okay. Behind that, you can see kind of the common room where the guards would normally hang out when they're off duty and not sleeping. And you can see a fight happening through there. The three guards who were not part of your crew and Debbie. She's fighting all three of them. Yeah, Debbie! She she absolutely is. (laughs) Yeah, Debbie! One One of them is already down. Hell yeah, Debbie! Uh, and as you, as you kind of step into the airlock, she judo flips one of them into a wall, but then the other one catches her in the back with a taser. <gasps> no, Debbie. <gasps> so the question is, what do you do? So there's only one that is currently there's conscious? One, there's one that is currently up and active, there's one that's unconscious, and there's one that's just got thrown into a wall and may or may not be conscious. Okay. This hologram that I have on is, like, purely attuned to me, correct? Yes. But all the cameras are currently down. Should be. Trying to figure out how to do this without completely implicating myself. (laughs) You know what? I'm not going to do anything. Uh, I'm going to look at Nightshade and say, take him down, don't kill him. Nightshade looks at you for a second as if to consider whether or not to follow that order. And I am going to need you to provoke him. Doesn't he already know Debbie? He does. But it doesn't look like Debbie. Yeah, Debbie was oh. technically. He doesn't even know if I'm. Did you William. specify which one you were talking about when you said that? That's a good question. Go ahead and provoke someone. That is going to be well. It'd normally be a seven, but I'm guilty. Okay, so that's a five. So that's a five. So Nightshade uh, looks at you for a second, and then Spoon first dives through the uh, the airlock door, and let's pan outside to Darren for just a second. <laughs> Hey, that's one good thing, though. That's my potential mark meter filled up. Nice! So, Darren, there are, in fact, some drones that are lifting off from the top of the hub at this point and heading in your direction. You are now completely in vacuum, and you're feeling a little bit crispy because you just got electrified. And there's still a guy in the other room, right? Because remember, there was a gentleman who came in to, like, why are all of them knocked out? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bruno Finn, yeah. That's the name of the guy? Yeah, Mm -hmm. Bruno Finn, head of security, yes. Oh, okay, Bruno Finn, okay. Yeah. He's still there? Yeah, he's still in the other room. Well, in the other building. So what are you doing? Trigger warning for anyone with body horror. <laughs> we'll put a content warning on this episode. Okay, I'm not sure. I want to rip off my arm. Okay. To what end? <laughs> to free myself free of being stuck to the door. I'm Wait, not... are you stuck to the door? I am. I tried to face through it and it stuck my... I'm stuck to the wall with my hand halfway it did, through. It did electrocute you while you were halfway through. If I, I wasn't intending for it to, like... Oh, be there? stuck? No, 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 no. Oh, I thought I was stuck. No, 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 no. no, no. no. You, just, you just got shocked before you could get all the way yeah. through. And you're, you're stuck in the outside because yes, you can't open you the door. you are outside of the door. You're, you're kind of stuck in that space between buildings with no atmosphere, mm-hmm. but you're not physically trapped in the door. That makes things a bit different. Hopefully a little easier. <laughs> no. <laughs> It does not. I was actually banking on ripping off my arm. I mean, you still can't. You still can. <laughs> Lack of reason now. But, you, know, you, you don't do have it. to, but I'm not going to stop you. Can we go back to having my arm be stuck to the door? <laughs> if you think that is more narratively interesting, then yes. No, I, mean, I don't want to make you do that. No, that's you, fine. You wrote the story. Because I no, thought if I it, it did... Is, it, if that is what you think happens and that makes sense in your narrative, then let's go yeah. with it. So your arm is stuck in a door. Well, I thought my arm was stuck in a door because if I ripped off my arm, I could do... I could break something important. 
so I could clear <laughs> condition the, at the end of the clearing condition. a condition by ripping off your arm. <laughs> oh, and that, that somehow yeah. doesn't create other conditions. <laughs> I that like also, it. That's awesome. That also sounds like it would clear guilty. <laughs> it might it would I would I would give it either on one of those, but maybe So not, my thought was you know, there's the head of security right behind me. I'm mm-hmm. being cooked alive and I'm seeing like the alarms go off. I think I would have like a fight or flight animal response uh-huh. of yeah. Like, I'll chew off my own damn leg kind of situation if I'm in a trap, sure. only I'm going to fa- slightly phase my arm and rip it loose from what's trapped in the door. Nice. So nice. I thought that's what happened, though. No, no. So I don't... That's good. I like that. Let's roll with that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Backtrack. My arm's stuck in the door. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to make you roll anything for that. I figure uh, yeah. plant physiology is yeah. anything that I'm can going... Happen. But I want to have, like... It's just pruning. All my eyes are, like crying and like yeah, my yeah, eyes are yeah. huge and like there's sweat dripping down and I like take a couple of really panicked breaths before phasing it and ripping it off and okay. then I would scream and cry for a second. A okay. It is, it is also worth uh, worth reiterating that there were some drones that lifted off from the top of the hub building and they are moving in your direction. Yeah. Uh, so now that you have done this, mm-hmm. what are you up to? I genuinely don't know what to do. That's fine. Hesitation <laughs> is a is a valid course of action. It is. I mean, I might as well just try again. I don't know what else to do. Um, <laughs> try to the, uh, phase through the wall, I guess. There's the truck over by the platform by the crater, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll that try, probably has I'll try that again, and if not, then I'll, I'll pass out or something, because I don't know what to do after that. That's fine. So I would like you to go ahead and... I don't think you're necessarily going to get through here, but I do want you to unleash your powers. All right. <laughs> All right, so that's an 11, 12, 13, because that's freak, right? Yep. So yep. I have a 13. That's a 13. You move to the side of this big door, what caught your arm. Yeah, and... I'm going to back up against the wall, hold it, like, holding my mm-hmm. one arm, and I'm going to run and jump and phase through, like make yourself like a little ball and, and phase through. And as you are about to jump and hit the wall and phase through is the point at which you can see uh, the hallway that leads to the building that William was in. You can see that wall just burst outwards, mm-hmm. and this huge hulking shark dragon looking form uh, steps out onto the moon just before you uh, enter this this hub building Mm -hmm. and they are making a beeline for that excavation pit. Oh no, okay. So So am I not on the surface of the moon? No, you're you're inside the the hub inside the hub now. Oh! Congratulations. I made it into the hub. You did. Yay! Good job. Can we have a applause soundtrack? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Some good Foley work there. Oh, right. oh, I love where this is going. Did that scene end? Yes. Can I clear? <laughs> you can. Cl- I think that works as either uh, either angry or guilty, whichever one you think that makes more sense for. Yeah, I'm going to use angry. That's what I thought I was clearing when I okay. first thought of that, that works. idea. So let's get over to Barium. You come to the uh, to the door into the hub, and it is similarly barred. Shall we say? Are you just knocking this door down as well? I mean, unless I see something that may, would make me want to change my trajectory, yes. Because I don't know anything else that's going on, so you, I'm just heading back to the You hub. do hear the whir of some sort of mechanical uh, countermeasures, and you do hear from probably the other side of this complex what sounds to be an explosion, followed by a, another one shortly after. Mm. Because we are now catching you up to where everyone else is. Right. But from this door itself, no, not so much. Okay. I would ask T if she knows what, what all that was. You have a very quick loading bar, and then T goes, Electronic countermeasures are currently in play. Drone system has been activated, and one of the hallways has been blown. Another one has been compromised. This place is just going to hell real quick. Okay, that's fun. I'm just going to knock down the door. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and unleash those powers. That is a seven. So you are going to get through the door, but do you want to mark a condition, or shall I tell you how it is uh, unstable or temporary? Uh, I spent a lot of time clearing conditions to make it unstable or temporary. <laughs> okay. So you break down this door, and as you do, you can see that there is kind of a rolling fight happening inside the hub. Nightshade has just come up behind a guard and put him in some sort of hold from which he releases him just limp a couple of seconds later. Whether this person is alive or dead, who knows? But he does look back to you and sees what looks to be another big guard. 
and twirls a spoon in his fingers and uh-huh. throws it in your direction. Uh-huh. Now, William, you did not so much fill in Nightshade on the fact that you had allies here. I did not. It didn't, didn't come up. And as you see the door on the other side of the hub open and Jackie, uh, well, not open, but knock over and then Jackie step in, Nightshade reacts very, very quickly by throwing a spoon. He's not weaponless. What's he thinking? Well, we'll see. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to do a defend action. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and defend Jackie. We'll uh, yeah, just basically pop a portal in front of the spoon. Okay, and just like <laughs> so. Before you do that, I would like to give you ah here. Yeah, yeah. You've been waiting on this eagerly. I really have. I would like to get, and I'm gonna read this for the audience. <laughs> and I'm gonna give this to you because this is yours for the rest of the time you are on the moon. Okay. When you try to use magic on the moon, <laughs> mark the awakening track and pick one before rolling the relevant move. You have three options on this list. So every time you use magic, you're going to pick one of them. Okay. And I get to mark a track that will maybe come into play. We'll see. Okay. And I tell you what, why don't you just tell us what these options are as you pick them? Okay. So which one are you picking first? I don't like any of those. Can I, can I not pick one? <laughs> nope. You have to pick oh, one. Oh, <laughs> lordy. All right. We're going to do Their Eyes Are Upon You. Okay. Which means I mark a condition as you feel their attention and hunger. <laughs> So, ever since you've been on the moon, you've so you've tried to use your abilities twice now, mm-hmm. and both times something has been affecting them and kind of drawing them down towards you know the center mass of the moon. And as you do this for a third time, you get the sharp and immediate feeling that something large is watching you just over your shoulder you even briefly in the reflection of the airlock door can see a flash of something that you can't quite make out but it shakes you go ahead mark that condition and then roll your defend okay i'm so excited (laughs) (laughs) okay so now we have to figure out how to force william to use more magic (laughs) yes Oh no, I can't face through. I need a portal! <laughs> okay. For now, at the first instance of this, uh, William is going to start to feel angry. Okay. We'll get into other feelings later <clears throat> as, as this continues. Hey, but for the time being, something isn't working, and I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong, and that oh. makes me mad. Pro There's... tip on how to get rid of angry. <laughs> you got four limbs. <laughs> four chances. Go ahead, Pro Robert. tip, if I can just... <laughs> defend someone properly, I can clear that condition in, right, right, right back. In theory. In theory. <laughs> Unfortunately, that depends on this roll that's about to happen. Yep. Oh, boy. Which is a bad roll, <laughs> I might add. Oh, what's your total? Five. Okay. You pop your portal open and almost immediately it just sucks down into the core of the, uh, the moon, and you can actually feel something starting to tug at you as well. So, for now, Jackie, I would like you to take a powerful blow. There's a small plastic spoon flying in your direction, and for a second it doesn't seem like this is going to be anything important, and then it slices through a concrete beam and doesn't slow down. Okay, let's let's get get some snake eyes here. Nope, that's an eight. That's a nine. (laughs) Okay. So I don't lose control of my powers. No. So what do you want to pick off that seven to nine list? Good thing I cleared angry. (laughs) Good thing. (laughs) I'm going to give ground this time. I was not expecting this. Okay. For the first time, I'm just going to give ground to the spoon. So how do you give ground? I suppose I just take the spoon below. And, you know, it's going to knock me back or whatever it does. Okay, no, I like that. I mean, I guess I like it would cut something. But... Yeah. It goes straight through your shoulder and knocks you back a little bit okay. into one of the walls. Uh-huh. And I think the opportunity your opponent's going to take is actually this is the moment when Major Ursa shows up. Okay. And so so that, does that hole appear in the hologram as well? No, actually, it does not. Now, at this point, Darren, uh, (laughs) you have made it into the hub, just saw Nightshade throw a spoon through your friend, and at that point, one of the doors to, like, one of the inner kind of chambers of this hub building opens up, and you see Major Ursa step out, and she has geared up a little bit. Before, she was just in a standard kind of uniform Uh, At this point, she is in a combat vest Mm -hmm. so that you can see that she's got big bear claw tattoos on either bicep. Oh, that's so badass. (laughs) It really is. That's so badass. She is wearing gloves that appear to have some sort of big metal claws attached to the end. Oh my god. 
Right. Uh, and she is just decked out with various, you know, hanging restraints, hanging weaponry. <laughs> what are my seduction options here, right? <laughs> <laughs> But as she sees Nightshade in the middle of this, having just dispatched one of the guards, uh, she makes a move on him and basically sinks those claws straight into his gut. <gasps> oh no! Uh, can I defend him? You can certainly try. How would you like to defend him? Oh, you defend him, but not Debbie? <laughs> what the hell Debbie is this bullshit? Debbie doesn't need defending. Have you seen her? <laughs> she just got yeah. knocked out! <laughs> Anyhow... How would you like to try and defend him? Portals. 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 <laughs> portals. 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 <laughs> demons? Yeah, demons? Oh, that still makes a portal, though. All right. I don't care. William is not going to use magic to defend him. <laughs> okay. He is going to do something insanely stupid, uh-huh. and he's just actually going to throw his own actual body in front of this blow. Okay. Go ahead and roll the defense on him. Which is a really stupid move on his part, and I'm hoping might absolve guilty. You know what? Definitely. It depends on how this roll goes. It does depend on how this roll goes. So that is a seven. So on a seven to nine, you are going to keep them safe, and you're going to choose one. Uh, Do you want to add a team to the pool, take influence over Nightshade in this case, or clear a condition? I guess I don't actually have influence over Nightshade right now. You do not. I have a plus one forward against him. You do. His brother. You know what? Which as much as I would forward. love to clear a condition, this is a prime opportunity yeah. okay. to actually take influence over Nightshade. Sure. So you take influence over Nightshade. Now, the other thing you do on a 7 to 9 is expose yourself to danger or escalate the situation. Clearly, I just expose myself to danger. Fair enough. So you throw yourself in front of that blow, and Ursa does not stop. She catches you full on. And rather than just like, so you're throwing yourself in front of this, mm-hmm. she catches you in the chest and continues the swing through <laughs> into a concrete pillar. Uh, oh, I definitely need you to take a powerful blow. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Oh, Snake eyes. Ta- so mark potential as normal. And, yeah. And tell us how you weather this blow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what does the panel look it like? It barely grazed him. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even... I don't... How... Okay, Demon. so... Demon. Because you definitely take the blow, but how do yeah. you stand up? How do you make this, like... How do you shrug it off? You're wearing a demon bulletproof vest under your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you just pull it open, like summon a portal. Just, over like, your I stomach. can't, like, in character figure out how he would weather what, this blow. What's the coolest thing you can think of after that hit? What is the coolest thing William could possibly do? I mean, stand up and just kind of shake himself and be like, I'm fine, it's good. Just, like, the best basically you've crack got? his neck. And that's what happens. Okay. A nightshade uh, steps back in front of you. And just kind of like raises his hands, despite the fact that he has, of course, thrown his spoon at this point. Darren, what do you do at this point? Because no one has really noticed that you just like rolled through the wall. (laughs) With a body part missing. Right? Yeah. No one has yet noticed that. There's other stuff going on. So you have a moment here. And I also think that Ursa is looking slightly confused that you in particular threw yourself in front of this criminal because Uh you were supposed to be the guard watching him. Uh Uh-huh. And she did not suspect you. So she's a little confused at the moment. I just didn't like, she didn't suspect me in particular or suspect the guy watching him? No, no, suspect you in particular. Oh, okay. She because, suspected me. Yes. She knew She knew that Jackie was on was on something. That's fair. All right. I'm thinking of using my move coming for you because I did mark a condition and I would like to blame Ursa for that condition mark. So I take one forward against her because I blame her for causing it. That's fair. And I'm going to do something with that in mind. What you gonna do? I'm scared to use pheromones because I still have people in this building that need to stay awake. And I don't think either of you have the capability of surviving a pheromone. I don't feel like you're I do, uh, I do. familiar enough with our body chemistry to only target specific people. Exactly. So. That's what I'm saying is I everyone could be affected <laughs> if I used pheromones. Yeah. Normally I would say I could armor up, but uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, use your magic. Go for it. <laughs> use your uh, magic. I don't like where that's going. <laughs> Look, I've only marked one of this awakening track. It's fine. It's two. That's the total of Is it's this two. <laughs> a one-story building? No. There is one story that you are in at the moment, but it does go both up and down. Oh. All right. You just haven't seen the rest of it yet. I did not realize. Yeah, it's a big building. And you said there's a commissary? Yeah, you're in kind of like a common it's area that is on the area. ground floor. Yeah, but there's building. food. Sure. Would there be fruit? You know what? Let's say yes. Fruit or veggies? Yeah, sure. Why not? Gotta, gotta eat well, right? Right? Gotta get your vitamins. Okay. 
I'm going to use my plant affinity again. Okay. What kind of fruit do you think should be here? I'm thinking probably limes, lemons. Ooh, yeah. Citrus. Citrus, citrus yeah. foods that survive well and travel. Yeah, that's, that uh, makes a lot of sense. Definitely no bananas. No bananas, yeah. possibly watermelons. I feel like a scurvy up here. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So definitely citrus. But definitely like, citrus fruits. Probably anything with like a thicker one skin. One yeah, shape. exactly. Okay. Apples would probably yeah. definitely be yeah. there. Okay, right. so, so I like that. So there's definitely at least citrus and apples. Probably no like bananas or grapes or like easily perishable. All right, cool. I'm going to use my plant affinity to cause those seeds to erupt into growth and have them grow out from the second floor up through the first floor, uh, from the first floor through the second floor. Okay. And like knock her out of the way. Okay. Like and get her caught in the branches. So you're basically just trying to like incapacitate her with fruit. Exactly. Uh, I think this seems like a directly engaging somebody kind of kind of role. Yeah. So go ahead and plus roll plus danger. danger, which I think is a good stat for oh, you right afraid. now. Yeah, but your danger plus, is plus two. And I have coming for you, which is plus one. So you're looking at a plus two here. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. We said that before. You're fine. You're fine. Seven? Nine. Okay. I have a nine. Okay. So you're at a nine, so you get to pick one thing off of that list. Do you want to resist or avoid her blows, take something from her, create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition? <laughs> Keeping in mind that last option is my choice. Wait, it is? You pick the list, so you pick impress, yeah. surprise, or frighten. I don't think I get playing it that way up to this point. We're usually not, because I usually agree with what you're doing. Oh, okay. But it's good to reiterate this stuff for the audience. Okay. Okay. They want to create an opportunity for my allies. Okay. What uh, opportunity do you want to create? A chance for them to run away. Basically, to get away from Major Ursula. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, I think that works. The thing you did not do is resist or avoid their blows. Yes. Uh, so you create this eruption of, like, vine growth out of... Uh, do you want it to be, like, an apple or an orange? I like limes. Or, like lime? Okay. Yeah, so, like, I get the I'm really digging that. Yeah, yeah, they do. I like that. I like that. And it just sweeps her up and pins her to the, uh, to the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And as that is happening, she very quickly looks around and I think takes a big, like, U-shaped metal thing off of the jacket and flings it in your direction Mm -hmm. and it very powerfully uh, magnetizes to the wall behind you pinning you to the wall Mm -hmm. and I think she says how many of you traitors are there so you are pinned for the moment but the rest of you have this opportunity where Major Ursa is in fact trapped so Jackie what do you do man (laughs) (laughs) so I don't have a clear escape route at this point since there's no transport or anything. That you know of, yeah. So... Darren is the one that knows that there is, in fact, a transport. Yeah, I don't know this. Yeah. So my instinct is going to be to get to free Darren. So No, that's fair. That makes Are sense. Are you Here's... okay, though? Because you just got a... You got spooned. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. I'm okay. <laughs> it's just a little spoon-sized hole in your, in your shoulder. Right. It's fine. As far as I know, I'm okay. <laughs> we are getting the shit kicked out of us. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Okay. So, so yeah, I want to... I want to free Darren. Okay. Um, I can do this either by smashing that metal thing or something more destructive that I prefer the, not to do. The question is, what do you want to do? I want to break that metal thing, whatever it is. Okay. So basically there's this big restraint kind of bar that's holding yeah, on because you yeah. kind of want to break that. That's fair. I think that's actually unleashing your powers. Oh, uh, all right. To- I'm also going to take a plus one, as this is uh, impressing my my love, which is Darren. That works. <laughs> my friend here. Color me impressed, my friend. Good. <laughs> unless, you roll, unless you roll a two. Yeah, then, oh, it, will, yeah. then it will not impress. I'll, I'll just be... Okay. Uh, let's... I'll feel loved. That's a ten. Nice. I am impressed. So yeah, you rip this thing out of the wall, and it is definitely holding on very tight, but you're very much stronger than the force of magnetism right now. <laughs> Sure. Love is the most powerful constant. Yes. (laughs) And as you do that, you all hear a thump impact the roof, and Major Ursa kind of looks down at you. Cavalry's here. And we get a panel outside the building of a figure in blue and chrome armor standing on the roof of Candyland, and a little caption box under it that says, Axiom. Yes! And we'll see you next issue. Masks A New Generation is written for Magpie Games by Brendan Conway. It is made of impromptu amputations, 
bicep tattoos, and lunar lime trees. Embezzle money from your secret government moon prison and use some of it to buy this game. Crushing Depth appears courtesy of Landon Cornell, the MC of St. Fleur Pod. You can find him on Twitter at super underscore Landon1. Jackie Bear is played by Christina. Piero is played by Lenny. You can find her on Twitter at 1-800-TOD. William Infernus is played by Jordan. Darren is played by Nan. Find her on Instagram at Nanjitsu. Apex City is GM'd by Jeremy, who also writes the music and edits this podcast. Our album art was provided by Fitzsimmons. Find them on Instagram at Fitzonomy. Find us on Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, or an ominous mining site in a lunar crater. Follow us on Twitter at ApexCityCast. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next issue.